what's up guys mike the coder here today we're going to go over the next problem of two sets so basically we have a list of numbers from numbers one to n and we need to divide this list of numbers into two sets of equal sum okay so yeah if it's possible print out yes and then print out the two sums if it's not possible print out no okay all right um the first thing you have to realize is that uh so let's say Let's say n is equal to 5, okay? Let's say n is equal to 5. So we need to divide the numbers 1 to n into two sets of equal sum. So let's just, uh, let's just, uh, let's just print out all the numbers 1 to n. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, okay? So these two sets have to have the same equal sum, right? So I'm going to split this into like two, two sets. This is this set, and then this set, and they have to have equal sum. Okay, so before we do that, uh, let's just add up all the numbers from 1 to 5 because that'll be our total sum. And uh, we need to split these numbers into two sets of equal sum. So if I add them up, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5, what is that going to give us? That's going to give us 3 plus 3 is 6 plus 4 is 15. Okay, so now um, what you realize is that if our total sum is 15, and we need to split this into two equal sums. Um, this is impossible, right? Because let's say, let's say the first one's like three, and then, and then I, let's say I put three in the first one, and then I put like I don't know, four in the uh, I don't know two in the two in the first one also three in the first one two in the first one, and I put one and four in the second one. Um, I have to put five somewhere, right? So I put five here. Um, no matter how I try to arrange these two numbers, it's not going to be possible because this number, our total sum of 15, is not divisible by 2, right? So if, if it's not because, like, if our total sum has to be able to split into two parts, right? Like, if I had, like, um, if I had, like, 2, 4, 6, 8 or something, um, this total sum has to be able to split into two, two, two different sums right so like this has to be divisible by two in order for this to work otherwise it's not possible right uh, if i want to make this sum this set add these values up to equal to this set right our total must be divisible by two otherwise it's not possible okay so um yeah so our total sum from one to n has to be divisible by two in order to for it to be possible otherwise it's not possible Okay, so yeah, so now what we're going to think about is uh, how do I get the total sum? So let's say I have um, numbers from 1 to n. So let's say I have 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, uh, let's go up to 4 this time because this total sum is definitely divisible by 2. Okay, so if I want to add all the numbers from 1 to n, uh, there's a formula to do it, right? So in this case, n is equal to 4, right? Um, this is the formula is n times n plus 1 over 2, right? This is the sum of all numbers from 1 to n. So 1 plus 2 up to n, okay? So this is what it is, okay? So then um, what you could do now is you could do 4 times 4 plus 1 is 5 divided by 2. This is going to give you uh, 10. So this would be this would be the sum of numbers from 1 one to n and then um, you just have to check if this is divisible by two and then yeah if it's divisible by two then you could split into two, two sums okay so now we need to now that we have this we need to think about okay um if it's divisible by two how are we going to create our two create our two uh, sets that we could add up to the value of 10 okay so yeah let's do that now Okay, so the first case what you could think about is that uh, let's say our n is even, right? So n is equal to 4. Um, if you were to just add up all the numbers, the first and last term, so if I do 1 plus 4, 1 plus 4, this is going to equal to 5, right? And um, 2 plus 3, the next two terms, first and last term, is also equal to 5, right? And um, if you think about this, this is the same thing no matter what from any numbers right so because of this 
because they're always the same values when you uh, add the first and last terms over and over again even for any even number of n um, what you could do is you could always just pair the first and last term into one set and then alternate the sets so what you could do you could do um, so let's say all right, we have two sets here I just always put I'll put first and last term before in this and then I'll just put uh, two and three in the second one and just keep alternating right and then in the end the sums of this side is going to be equal to five the sums of this side is going to equal to five and no matter what there are both these sums are going to always equal be equal in the end because of uh, because adding the first and last term is always the same for when n is even right if you pair the first and last term and add them up there's already going to they're always going to have the same number so yeah, uh, that's one way to do this. Uh, just always pair with the first and last term, put in one set, and then put the second, uh, second to the last term, put another set, and then just keep alternating it. And then sooner or later, you're gonna have the uh, same, same two sets that have the same sum. Okay, so that's the first case. Um, what's different is if n is odd, and that's the case where it's a little tricky. Okay, so that was the case when n is even so let's go to the case when n is odd where it's a little tricky um so as you can see here, see here if if i do n is, when n is odd and i try to pair the first and last terms right and put them in a set so i do try to put one and seven into one right so i put one and seven into one set here and i try to put two and six in the other set so I try to do two and six in the other set, alternating it, right? See, they, they still have the same sum currently. I try to do uh, three and five into one set. So I'm gonna put three and five into this set again. So three and five. Um, in the end, we're gonna have an odd number and the last value is four. So I can't just put four here because then the sums are not the same, right? Here we would have 16. If I add up one plus seven plus three plus five, this would be 16. Here I would have 12, so yeah, that doesn't work. So uh, what could you do in this case of uh, when there's an odd number? Um, what you could do is that if you were to look at a pattern, um, you see that this last term is 7, right? Um, I could take 1 plus 6, and this equals to 7. I could take 1 plus 6, right? 1 plus 6, 1 plus 6 is equal to 7, right? But not just that, um, 2 plus 5 also equals to 7. 2 plus 5 also equals to 7. Right, 2 plus 5 is equal to 7. And uh, not just that, 3 plus 4 is equal to 7. 3 plus 4 is equal to 7. So because of this, um, we have all the numbers, and we are all pairs all already in all these cases, and they all add up to 7, right? And we use all the pairs already currently, besides the last term, right? We paired everything besides the last term. So I'm just going to put this here besides the last term. So um, what you can do is that we could put um, the first and last term besides the 7, right, besides n. If we could uh, pair the first and last terms of all these values except for n and put them into alternating sets. So what I could do is um, here I could put 1 plus 6 is equal to 7, right? So I could just put here are my two sets, right, two of my two sets. So I put 1 plus 6 is equal to 7, right? So I put 1 plus 6 here. So I get sort of this. And I alternate. I'm going to put 2 plus 5. It's also equal to 7. So I'm going to put 2 and 5 here. All right, so I just got rid of these. And then 3 plus 4 is equal to 7, right? So I put back into the first set, 3 plus 4. And that's also equal to 7. So now they're all gone, right? They're all gone. And um, we just have this last term left, right? We have this last term left of 7. And because all these, this sum of 1 plus 6 is equal to 7, right? This is equal to 7. These two, 3 plus 4 is also equal to 7. And uh, 2 plus 5 is also equal to 7. And uh, the only thing left that is not equal to 7 is uh, the smaller list, the small list here, right? 2, 5. And um, if we want to just uh, get this smaller list to equal to 7 also, we just, we could just add the last number n into our smaller list into our smaller list of seven. So I'm gonna put this in here. And then in the end, um, we have this group is equal to seven, this group is sum is equal to seven, this group is sum equal to seven. And this last number is also equal to seven. So in the end, both of our two sums of our all our sets, all our sets of uh, seven plus seven is equal to 14. 
And um, 2 plus 5 plus 7 is also equal to 14. So this is also equal to 14. So then both of our sets in the end are going to equal to the answer. So essentially is, is that uh, whichever, we could just pair all the numbers from, pair the, the first and last terms, all the numbers except for n, right, except for n, in case when n is odd, and then put them into alternating sets. And then um, whichever is the smaller one, we could just put this last term of n into it. And then they'll ha make sure both of our two sets are have the same sum. Okay, so that's essentially the gist of it. So I could show you guys the code now, and then I'll be on my way. All right, guys, so now I'm going to explain the code to you guys. Um, it's not super difficult, um, although I didn't really comment it out enough, and it's not, like, super... I guess uh, I'll just explain it to you guys, like, what I'm doing. Okay, so the first thing is that uh, we read in the number n, and uh, we have this... Uh, if the sum is not divisible by 2, so if it's not even, right, if it's not even, um, we print out no, because that means that it's impossible to split it into two groups, okay, where the sums are the same, right, uh, just from the first part of the video. Otherwise, it is possible. So I'm going to print out yes, okay. Now I need to create my two groups, right, right my two sets that I have to print out. So first, I'm going to create a vector of long longs of f, is going to represent my first set and then s is going to represent my second set right so i have two sets right f and s okay all right if n is even if n mod by 2 is equal to 0 so if n is even i could just pair the first and last terms right i could just pair the first and last terms and i just alternate them right so um what i do here is to pair the first and last terms um this is basically the same using the same idea as um reversing an array where you loop only up to the middle, and then you just subtract the length of the array from the index that you're looping in order to get your first and last terms. So if I were to draw it out uh, with you guys, this is like a trick you could use. So let's say I'm at, uh, let's say I have one, two, three, four. Uh, hopefully this works. Is it working? Oh, it's not working. Um, hold up, give me a few, give me a few seconds. Let me just add, have this in here. Okay, so this is working now, I believe. Um, yeah, okay. So let's say I have the number 1, 2, 3, 4. Right. Um, if I want the first and last term to pair them up and alternate them, I could do is uh, I could just loop. So I have the indexes for 0, 1, 2, 3, right? So this is using the same idea as uh, reversing an array. Um, I could loop through to the middle t values to the middle of the array or uh, whatever it was. So loop two to this middle. And then I just take the first and last term. I just take, um, so our value is equal to n, right? n is equal to four. So I loop two to the middle of uh, up, to, up to two, but not including two. So I go to, uh, well, uh, up to the middle here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take uh, the first and last terms. So what that is, is that's the index this is our index, right? This is our index. Our index is this. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pair this per the last term into one set, and then two and three into the other set. So if you want to alternate, um, easiest way is just to check if the index is even or odd, and they'll they'll just alternate you uh, to put the values into one set and the second set. Now to get the first and last term, it's pretty easy. Um, First term is just going to be uh, your index plus one, right? Because if I'm looping from zero to two to have the halfway point of my array, right? Uh, zero, the index plus one is get you your current number because in our array, it's just a uh, one to four, right? So it'll just be um, index plus one. So the first term is index plus one. So zero plus one would be one. So that'll be our first term. And if I want to get the last term, using an index i from zero to the halfway point. Um, I just take the length of my array of n and subtract from my index. So in this case, I'll just take n is a four minus index is zero, which gives me four. And that gets me my last term. So I don't have to use like any of uh, any crazy, like ridiculous uh, 
uh, counters and stuff like that. I don't want to use that. So this is a little easier to to deal with, right? And then um, then if I want to alternate to add to the another set, right? All I have to do is just check if my index is odd or even, and that'll alternate which sets I could put in too. So since now one is odd, right? Now I just do the same thing. So I take my index of one plus one, which is which will give me two, right? I want this number two. So index one plus one will give me two. So put two here. And then I want the last term also. So that'll just be four minus one, like the value of n, right? The length of n minus your current index of one, which will give me three. And I'll give me my last term of three. So I just add three into my second second list. Okay, so then I have two lists of one, four, and uh, two, three. Okay, so yeah, so the code, what I'm doing here is um, I'm looping through from zero to n over two, which is going to be the halfway point. And then if it's even, right, if the index I'm looping is even, I, that puts all the, the pairs into one list of f. Otherwise, I put, I'll put all the pairs into a, the second list of s because this is alternating how I'm putting the two pairs, okay? So the uh, the first part, the pair of the first, add the first and last terms is just going to be your current index plus one, right? I plus one, which is uh, I plus one, which is will give you the first value. And then the last terms of what you're looping to is just going to be N minus I, right? If I'm looping from I from zero to the halfway point, it'll be N minus I. So yeah, so it would be this first uh, first list without pushback, I plus one. And then f uh, first list dot push back uh, n minus i, which will be the last term, and then I just alternate it. So if it's if it's odd, if it's even, I put in the first list. Otherwise, if it's odd, I put the values in the second list, the two pairs in the second list. Okay, so that's that's the case if n is even. Now, if n is odd, remember what what happens when n is odd. We're going to ignore the we're going to ignore the last value. Right, and then whichever smaller I put the last value of n into that set. So let's go back to when n is odd. So back in our when in our case when n is odd, that's when um, that's when one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right, n is equal to seven. Um, so what I do is uh, I need to ignore this last term. So I'm just gonna ignore this, and uh, to do that. I need to now pair the values from the first and last terms, ignoring the last term of seven, right? So pair one to six, two to five, three to four, right? Three and four as the two sets. So it's essentially the same thing that I'm doing here, but um, now my loop is going to be n minus one over two, right? Because I'm not going to loop through the halfway point of of uh, the array anymore. I'm not going to loop through the halfway point of this. What I'm going to loop through halfway point is going to be here, right? Because I want to pair the one and six, two and five, and three and four, right? And to get the halfway point of this number, what is the halfway point of the values? Well, if our n is equal to seven, and I want to get the halfway point not including the last value of seven, all I have to do is just take n minus one, which will give me six, Right, n minus one, right? Seven minus one is equal to six, right? N minus one would give you six. And I just divide it by two. So that'll get me my halfway point that I'm gonna loop to. So then I would have uh, my halfway point that I'm gonna loop through, right? We're just getting rid of the last value. So if we have seven numbers, we get rid of the last value, well, there'll be six numbers left. And since I'm looping through the halfway point, I just take six divided by two, it'll give me three. So that'll go loop from zero to three. And I'll get through like half of these numbers, right? And pair them up. So that's why I loop from uh, i equals zero to n minus one over two. Okay, that's what uh, this value n minus one over two is. Okay, right? That's what that's for. Okay, and then it's the same thing. Um, same thing. We're just going to add the first and last term and alternate them into the two sets. Right. So here. Um, the first term is going to be, uh, so when i is even, we're, we're alternating them, right? We're alternating them to the two sets. So um, 
what we're going to do is the first term, i is going to be i plus 1. So it's the same thing as the first term as the value. So here our indexes are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right? And we're looping up to 3, right? We're looping up to 3. All right, so the first term that we're going to add is going to be our index plus 1 uh, that we're looping to, right? Because uh, index is 0, we plus 1, we get 1, right? So our index, so our first term, we start at 0 to the halfway point of 3, right? And then we do 0 plus 1, which is giving me 1. So this is our first term. So I pair that up, put that in the first set, right? So I have two sets here. So this is 1 is gone. Now, now to get the to get the last value of six, to pair them up, remember I want to pair one and six, and then I want to pair two and five, and I want to pair three and four, right? So to get the last value of six, in order to do this, um, it will be value of seven minus one, which is six, and then minus zero, which would be uh, six, right? So it would be yeah, seven minus one minus the current index that we at and that'll give you six right that'll give you six because i i'm not including this last term so yeah so it will be n minus a current index of i of zero of uh, i zero which is seven minus zero which is seven then minus one which is six which will give us six okay so that'll, that'll be that here now i becomes one right and then to get this one here, um, I need to alternate alternate it and add it to a the different set. And to do that, uh, I check I just check if i is even. Then I put in one set. If i is odd, I put in another set. Okay. So yeah, that's a way to alternate the two sets every time. So here, if i is equal to uh, so now i is odd. So now I'm going to put in the second set. So since now i is equal to one, now I'm going to do to get the value of 2, I just do 1 plus 1, which gets 2. So that'll put 2 in the second set. So this is gone. Then I need to get this last term, uh, well not 6. I need to get this last term of 5. So to do that, I just take 7 minus uh, 1, or the next 1, which is 6, and then minus 1 again to get 5. So 7 minus 1, which is 6, minus 1, it will get 5. So I put 5 into the second term, 5 into this one. So then this is gone now. And then I do 2 and 3, right? 2, 3. So to get this one, I need to do um, index of 2 plus 1, which will give me 3. So I put that here. And then I need to do 7 minus 2, which will give you 5, minus 1, which will give me 4. Okay, so I put that here also. So yeah, then all the values here are in the first set. And then we have values in the second set also. We have first set and second set. And then whichever is smaller, I'll just put this 7 in the last smaller value last set of seven this last term of seven so then all the the two sums of the two sets are going to be the same right it'll be 14 for both of them so to do that here i loop through from um yeah so the first set the first term was just going to be i plus one and then the last term will be n minus i minus one which will give you the last term and uh yeah and then we alternate it right so if i is odd if our index is odd, we add it to the first set. Otherwise, we add it to the second set. Okay, so we just alternate it. Then, um, whichever sets that's smaller, if f dot size is greater than s dot size, whichever is smaller, we're going to add the last value of n, our last term. So s dot push back at n because as this s size is smaller, and then otherwise we do f dot push back of n. And then in the end, we just print out our two sets. All right, our two. Uh, sets that we have. So I just print out f dot size and then I just print out each of the values. Loop from zero to f dot size and then just to print print uh, f of i and then I just put a new line and I print out the second set. Print out s dot size from zero to s dot size and print out s. So yeah, that's the gist of the code. Hope you guys enjoy this video. I hope you guys understand what I'm doing. Rate, comment, subscribe. I'll check you guys later. Peace.